Hi there, it's been a long time. I haven't really made any new content or specifically I uploaded any new content. And I wanted to make this particular video for a very long time talking specifically about firewall rules for VoIP networks or VoIP subnets. Anyway, I wanna make this video brief. I don't wanna go off topic because I can talk forever in this video and I'm gonna talk about the main points and obviously why I'm making this video. So basically, in our industry, IT industry, it's really rare to see, I would say, IP phones, uh, desktop IP phones or Wi-Fi IP phones on a separate subnet or a separate network. They're always on the same network as the desktop uh, systems in the office. And here we have a separate network uh, slash subnet with a separate uh, VLAN ID or basically on a VLAN on a switch, but that's kind of off topic right now. So we have a separate subnet. And for those who are not aware how PFSense functions, this is basically the routing platform I have here. When you create a new subnet, you will have no rules in this subnet. And by default, PFSense will block everything because you have no rules. You have to create rules to define or tell the PFSense uh, router where you want traffic to go. Do you want it to go to the internet? Do you want to go to a different subnet that the router hosts or basically provides? Uh, and you have to define those rules. Just like I mentioned earlier in the video, most uh, businesses I see, they don't have uh, VLANs or different subnets uh, for VoIP traffic. If they do, normally they'll just allow that subnet access to everywhere, meaning it will have access to the internet and it will have access to the other subnets on that router. What we like to do to secure our communications, because we can't trust the firmware on the phone because the firmware is, is uh, not open source, it's closed source, I guess you can call it, we cannot see if there's any backdoors and we don't have the control basically not control i would say but we don't know if the phone's gonna home back to a bad actor let's say the manufacturer of the phone and you know listen into your phone calls even if you have encryption enabled between your phone and the pbx server actually i'm going really off topic i guess you can say but not really but anyway and we have these rules and I'm going to talk about these rules and how these rules work in PFSense. And rules uh, start from the top to the bottom in PFSense. And the first parameter we have here, I guess you can say, is a green check mark. So this green check mark basically, it's an enabled rule. And if it's a grayed out check mark like this one right here, it's a disabled rule. Pretty basic, you know, green enabled, grayed out disabled. Green means it allows traffic. Uh, red X means it blocks and you can also have grayed out X. You can also reject packets, but I don't have this I don't have this uh, rule set up here. So we have our enabled rule We have how much how many packets uh, or data transferred through this rule Then we have our version of our IP protocol in this case It's version 4 we're using TCP and UTP and then we have our source in this case It's obviously the VoIP network and by the way i can name this anything i can name it land 2 land 5 land whatever i can name this anything i can name this iot same thing right here i can name this iot so we have our interface right here selected it's the network and we have our source port in this case asterisk means it could be anything any kind of port from one to what is it uh, i don't even remember sixty-five thousand something like that and then we have our destination here in this case, our destination is this firewall, obviously. It's an option in the rule drop-down menu. You can select this firewall. Basically, you don't have to type in the IP address of this uh, interface. So in this case, it's this firewall. And then the destination port on this firewall, it's the port 53, basically DNS. And then we have our gateway, applies to any gateway. We have our queues. We have none here, schedule, it's not configured. And description to put a basic VoIP to in DNS. So basically the reason we have this rule set up here, we need our IP phones to get uh, to, to, to basically, you know, have a connection to the DNS server. And if you know what DNS server does, I'm not even going to explain that portion, but basically we need our IP phones to figure it out what the IP addresses for those domain names are or subdomains. The next rule is basically the same. It's not used. And by the way, if you restart, if you restart your PFSense, 
uh, this will clear out. This next rule is basically the same, but in this case, we're allowing port 853. This is DNS over TLS, so we want to encrypt our DNS requests. By default, DNS uh, traffic is not encrypted for those who are not initiated. And this is why we want to use uh, 853 DNS over TLS, basically. Same idea as the, as the first rule. Then we have our third rule. Uh, same idea, basically, 123 port is for NTP. Uh, basically, we want our IP phone, IP phones connect to our firewall to get time. Nothing too special here, really basic. And the next one is a lot, a lot more interesting. Uh, this is uh, basically, I'm not even going to hover on this alias. Actually, I could hover. I can censor this out in post-production. So basically, the next rule, we have a lot of more data here, as you can see. Then uh, obviously TCP, UTP, IP version 4, VoIP, any port. And then we have our alias where we have our host names here. And I'm obviously censoring this out. And then we have port 443, HTTPS. And we have multiple our, multiple gateways right here uh, for redundancy. We have actually two gateways here for redundancy. Uh, meaning we have dual WAN to internet connections. And basically this rule allows uh, VoIP network to have access to the host names that are listed on this list basically and this allows our ip phone to download firmware files from our firmware server uh, basically whenever there's an update this is how we apply updates to our ip phones uh, basically and also it's an encrypted connection uh, that's number two so no one can really sniff our firmware files when the IP phones are downloading them. And um, we also have additional checks enabled. There's a valid certificate that the phones have to check. If a certificate is invalid, it will not proceed connecting to this uh, file server, basically. Kind of a long discussion here. The next rule is basically the same as the other rule, but in this case, uh, this rule connects to our PBX servers. Obviously, the phones need to register to a PBX server, and we have a list here of multiple PBX servers on this alias rule. Uh, and this is how our phones you know, connect to a PBX server in order to make and receive calls. And I, I forgot to mention, actually, alias is a really cool feature. Uh, think of it as a group. I can have multiple host names here listed instead of me creating five or three rules uh, with different host names. I can create one rule, throw all these host names in this alias and type in this alias as a destination. And that's one way we can minimize time and make this configuration a lot more efficient. And the next rule is basically the same rule as the other rule I just talked about. Basically, this rule allows for our phones to connect to our clients pbx server specifically the pbx service we manage and we have deployed for our clients so if we need to you know test the configuration or troubleshoot something on the pbx server we'll can we'll configure our own uh, ip phones to connect to those pbx servers and next rule is probably a really cool rule it blocks access to all of these private networks and it logs it so if uh, one of these ip phones uh, tries to connect to one of these private networks we can actually see what port uh, which IP phone, IP address, try to connect one of these private networks. So it gives us ability to log that. And uh, this other rule is disabled, disabled right now. Basic, this rule allows uh, IP phones to have access everywhere, everywhere on internet and everywhere on the all other subnets this PFSense router is hosting or providing with. And right now it's disabled. The only reason we have it here is for troubleshooting when we need to troubleshoot something, but most of the time, it's disabled, grayed out. So we don't have to, you know, create this rule every time we need to test something out. We just, we just, just hit the check mark, enable this rule, and that's it. And that's basically it. I haven't seen anyone who does something like this. Uh, we talked to a few, you know, network administrators, network uh, security experts. Uh, people don't really understand why you want to have these rules on your VoIP subnet. It's basically, the idea is this. You don't want to open up doors and ports everywhere you just want to open up doors and ports to the services that the phones need to and at the same time like i mentioned beginning of the video we don't know what kind of malicious code is written in that firmware of that phone and that's basically it i hope you enjoyed watching this i'm going to get going and don't forget to subscribe and i'm out of here <laughs>